Psalms 139, just going to read two verses real quick. Verses 17 and 18. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Now, when I look up and I try to find how many does that amount to, we can say a lot. But let me just throw a number out there at you. Based on the way they try to predict things and how the size of the sand and all those kinds of things, the grains of sand in the earth are seven quintillion five hundred quadrillion. Now, I can guarantee you that wasn't in Brother Doug's card today. We didn't give him that much money. That's a pretty big number. That's how often God thinks about you. Yeah. Not since you've been born until he comes back every day, Brother Phil, it says. How often are the thoughts of me every day? Yeah. That's how much he thinks about us. His focus is on us. Right. Where's your focus? Wow. Where is your focus at tonight? Good. Is your focus, when you walk in here the day, is your focus on fellowship or on your foe? Because how many times we walk in, how are you doing tonight, Pastor? It's good to see you. And, and our pastor or somebody else you may be talking to, well, hey, I've had a great week or I've had this going on. And, and you're sitting there and you're looking at them in the eye, Brother Clint, and you've not heard a word they said. Because you're too focused on what the devil has done to you this week on what you're about to tell them how bad your week's been, Brother Donald. You're not focused on fellowship and actually spending that time with them and finding out things about them because you never know what they might have gone through. Right. Might be just the help you needed. Right. Might be just the thing that you needed. Are you, are you focused on your fellowship or your foe? Are you focused on the preaching or your problems? Our pastor just said, he said, how many of us aren't going to remember what he preached on this morning, but we'll remember the snort. See, I got in on the snort now, Miss Lisa, so everybody's going to. So... Are we focused on his preaching or our problems? How much do we come in and we sat down on a church pew on a Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night and we're so focused on everything that we have going on we don't hear a single word the preacher says? If he says a joke, we might laugh. If he says something else, we might get a kick out of it. But overall, the message goes right over top of our head and right out that back door because we're not focused on it. Are we focused on the preaching or the problems? Are we focused on the pardon or our past? God's forgiven us. Yeah. Why do we allow the past to beat us up? Why do we allow the past to come up and just keep dragging up? Well, you can't do this, or you can't do that, or you're not worthy. No, God forgave me of those things. I'm going to move past those things and allow God to use me in whatever capacity that may be. But too often we get too focused on our past instead of our problem. And let me say this lastly. Are you focused on the worship when you come in here? Or are you focused on the world? See, we heard a song this morning, as I already just said. The only thing he bought was us. We should have kicked the walls out. Sure. Now, I will agree, there's times, uh, uh, you know, our pastor has got a message for us, but also th sometimes he's done enough for us. We're without excuse not to absolutely just come in and have a shouted out service a whole lot more often than what we do. Oh, yeah. Why? Because we're too focused on the world. Mm. Let me ask you this. I believe I'm in the right crowd when I say we're all over the virus. We're sick of it. Yeah. We're ready for it to go past. Yeah. We're tired of hearing all these people bring up the virus. Why? Because it's a 99 point whatever percent recovery rate. Yeah. Right? We're tired of hearing about this virus and allowing it to ruin all these people's lives when a vast majority of the people are getting over it. Yeah. Well, let's play the percentages. Even if you live to be 100 years... In the span of eternity, I don't know how you quantify how small of a percentage that is. Right. Why then is your focus on the now instead of what you can do for him? Yeah. Yeah. Our pastor has said it how many times? All that matters is what we've done for him. Yeah. And one day we'll wish we have done more. Yeah. But too many times our focus is on what's going on around here instead of on him. If we would get our focus on him, we would come in here each and every time ready to worship. I, I can't speak for Brother Jordan, Brother Phil, Brother Doug, anybody else who might be going to preach tonight. I'd have been fine not preaching. I'd have been fine not preaching. He walked in. Who's got testimonies? We just started shouting and people started testifying and we just let it go from there and see what happened. But see, our focus, we're too tied up in what's going on out there. Whether it be the virus, whether it be our problems we have going on, I understand those things. I understand that we have no idea sometimes what people are going through. But let's leave it out there and come in here and worship and allow God to help us. Because when we're sitting in here worried about it, he can't help us get past those things. 
Where is your focus at tonight? In Psalms chapter, well, Psalm 1, verse 6 verses. Blessed is the man. Notice that first word, blessed. Yeah. Didn't say he was okay. Said he was blessed. Yeah. That means every Christian that's in here is blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's all right. Yeah. Blessed is that man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. At one time he did. One time sure. we did. Sure. Bless the Lord. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But, thank God for those buts. Yeah. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and the Lord and the law doth he meditate day and night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting Lord. ahead of myself. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit. In his season, his leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Right. Such encouraging words. Sure. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, yeah. which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Right. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, sure. but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Right. In Psalms 19, verse 8, the statues of the Lord are right, yeah. rejoicing in thy heart. Yeah. This person, he or she, at one time used to be part of the world, but they separated themselves. They had that secret place that they can go to now. Yeah. Do you have that secret place you Good. can go to? Good. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I do. Yeah. August 31st, 1997, that's my secret place. Yeah. It wasn't so secret that morning when the congregation gathered around and prayed for me. Bless the Lamb of God. Certain things that this Christian can avoid in life or does avoid in life or should avoid in things in life, yeah. it'll mess you up. Right. Stay the way you are because that's how I'm going. Because when I meet, because when I mess up, when I have a dirty thought or a, once in a blue moon, a, a, a nasty word will come out of my mouth, a, that quick the Holy Ghost will convict me. Sure. And that's how it is. That's how it's supposed to work. Right. Anyway, this person is blessed when, because he doesn't stand in the way of sinners. Yeah. Nothing wrong with being friendly. Oh, right. Nothing wrong with being friendly because Jesus was friendly in John in Matthew chapter nine, verses ten through thirteen. It talks about how he was friendly with the publicans and sinners. You have to be that way. Sure. You've got to be that way in order to win people to Christ. Right. That's how it works. You've got to be friendly because there's lots of times I'll buy people candy bars after I just mess with their head for a while and then I'll buy them a candy bar. Then I'll mess with, I'll, bu I'll buy them cookies. I said, buddy, I, I'm just kidding. Yeah. And then they'll say, okay. And then we'll, I'll just talk about the Lord. I was telling, uh, I don't know who I was telling this to, but I was telling the pastor, I think it was, about uh, do you know the mysteries is, is, is Christ a mystery to you and he said no he wasn't but I never heard him all he, all he does is just talk dirty talk then I asked him I said is Christ a mystery to you he said no but his grandmother would, would talk to him about the Lord but I can't take too much of my time um, in verse 2 it talks about that his delight is in the law of the Lord and in the law that doth he meditate day and night sure that's what you're supposed to do you gave your life to Jesus Christ the Holy Ghost tells you read the word that's how you read the word that's how you grow in Jesus Christ yes. that's what it's about yes. then you go out and tell other people like the pastor says this is worship I'm having a time of my life coming in and here and yes. then going out there telling people about Jesus Christ when we go pass out tracts that's what it's about, telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ, and then we're done. He's going to call us all home, and yeah. so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yeah. Bless the Lord. In verse th three, we're going to be talking about, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth the fruit in his season, and his leaves shall be not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. Sure. In verse three, we're coming. You know you're going to be saturated in God's words. Just as soon as you open up this book, yeah. what a joy, because you're speaking, you're listening to God's words. They're holy words. And what a joy that is. Yeah. Now, the sinner has got a choice. We had a choice in life. Because one time, we fell under conviction. And we repented of our sins. Thank the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. This is the Sunday night crowd. The Sunday night crowd knows what it's about. You're saturated in God's word. He'll put you in position for that. It's permanent. And we're the perpetuity of the church. There's prosperity. And whatsoever you do, you shall prosper. Your family life, your church life, and or business life. What's that sound like? What's that smell like? That smells like victory. Don't it? That smells like victory to me. Verse 5, those people, I'm sorry, verse 4, and the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff that wind destriveth away. Yeah. Son, they're just enduring it. That's all they're doing. Right. Yeah. For when they stand at the judgment seat, they'll be consumed. Yeah. And they won't even know what hit them. Nope. Because they'll be so. My pastor had a good explanation, but I can't think of it right now. Mm, I can't. It was good. <laughs> but anyway, there are, they'll be like, they'll be level, ele- ele- well, it won't matter, but everything you know, everything they know is gone. Yeah. And they'll be, they, and that, what they've done was they built their foundation on shifting sand. Right, right. Verse 6, it talks about two ways a person can go in life. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Two ways a person can go in life. They can go the way of the cross. That leads to Calvary. Calvary is the way. No. But the sinner's going to choose the cursed road. It's a popular way. And it's for eternity. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Lord. John chapter number 2, we're going to begin reading verse number 23. The Bible says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and needed not that any should testify man, for he knew what was in man. Now in these verses, I mean we can go back to the beginning, chapter number 2, you find that three days after Jesus called Peter, James, John, Andrew, and then he had Philip and Nathaniel in chapter number two, three or chapter number one, okay? Chapter number two comes along, they're already at the marriage of Canaan. Then after that it says, and they went with his mother and his brethren, they stayed in Galilee for not many days. Right. It hadn't been that long since Jesus had started his earthly ministry. Right. Okay, he, he hadn't entrusted himself or the knowledge of who he really was to many people at this point. Then he gets to Jerusalem for the Passover feast, and there's a whole thought in there that they're celebrating the, you know, the lamb that God gave as a token, and if they put the blood, and then these people are believing on the lamb of God, but we don't have time to get into that. Okay, but it says that many believed on his name when they saw the miracles which he did, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and he did not that any should testify a man. First thing I want you to notice first is the acclaim. These were the Hebrews, the Jews, that in this day and era would take the bones of the prophets and bring them back out and they would worship the men that God had used. These are those that looked up to the Pharisees and treated them as, you know, deities. That they were, you know, men was getting the acclaim instead of God. And these people that believed on Jesus didn't believe on Him like, you know, John the Baptist did. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. They saw somebody that could do something they couldn't. Right. And Jesus knew if he entrusted himself unto them, that they would give the acclaim to man. Good. Which is the next point. Once you notice the anatomy. What is in man? Well, first off, we got a heart that's deceitfully wicked. No man can know it. Right. Right. Jesus doesn't want the flesh to get acclaim because right. the flesh tainted by sin. Right. The anatomy of man. I don't care if you're male, female, what color of the rainbow you are, you're cursed. Right. The flesh and man is bound to go back to the dust of the earth. True. Amen. The only thing that is good in us is what God put in us. Right. That was the breath of life. Right. right. We have nothing to merit in. Right. In fact, you know, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees saying that they were painted sepulchers, whited right. sepulchers. Right. They was dead. There was nothing good on the inside, but they sure made them look pretty on the outside. Yeah, it's good. Right. You can 
take a claim in a person but really on the inside that person's just like you and me Amen. Jesus said you don't get to know who I am or why I'm here because you wouldn't appreciate what really I am it wasn't a man he was the God man yeah, right. but then verse number 24 again he said Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men neither not that any should testify of man what was Jesus' sole desire in this earth? We heard about it a few Sunday mornings ago. To do the will of the Father. Right. To obey. Right. He had no glory in people giving Him praise. He wanted the Father to get praise. Yes. Everything He did was not for Christ. Everything He did was for the Father. Amen. And He knew that if He committed Himself to unworthy men and women, that they would go off telling about a man instead of telling about the Father. Right. Said he did not commit himself to them. That means he didn't entrust himself to them. Right. He did not think, and well, he knew because he knew all men. We just read it. But he knew that they were not worthy to know the mysteries of Christ. Right. And if they were made known to him, that that seed would go by the wayside. True. They believed on him. That was a great thing, but they didn't know him. Right. They believed that. He may have been sent from God, that he was God. I, I don't know what they believed, said that they believed on him, but they didn't get to know who he was. Mm. So the final point, I want you to notice the accountability that we have. Yeah. We know him. I am in him and he is in me. Right. Those of us that have been bought by the blood, we know the mysteries of the word of God. Yeah. Those things from old, from everlasting. I mean... Andrew went and told Peter, hey, we found the one yeah. that Moses and the prophets and the law and everybody testified of, he's here. Yeah. Right? Those that were looking for him found him. But not everybody that came to believe on him knew him. Right. Not everybody had that relationship. He didn't commit himself to everyone. I wonder how many of those that believed on him here at Passover might have been in the crowd that day when they were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Yeah. Right. They knew him, knew of him, but they didn't know him. Yeah. He did not impart himself unto them. Right. But we have. Amen. We've received. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know why he imparted or he committed himself unto us? Because he entrusted us that we would go out and give glory back to the Father. Yeah. The Father delights in those that give glory to his Son. Yeah. You know why some of them are planted by the waters and they're blessed and everything that they do they prosper in? Because everything God dumps on them they just give glory to God for it. Right. Everything that they do, well it's only by the grace of God and by the blood of Christ. Yes. I am what I am by the grace of God. Yes. Those people are the ones that prosper. But it's such a great accountability, it's such a great burden that we ought to have. How often do we say, well the church is great because of the preacher. Service is great because of the singers. Right, the grounds look so great because of those that go out and labor on it. No, it looks great because God just gave people that want to praise Him and bring glory in His name, yeah, right. put them in the church. Right. The preacher's great because he devotes himself to prayer and to study to get the heart and the mind of God so that when the people come, they can hear what thus saith the Lord. Yeah. The singing's always best when they get hooked up with the one that they're singing about. Right, right. If any man but the Lord build a house they, that labor, labor in vain. Right. But I wonder how many services we'd have where we just kick the walls out if instead of coming in and saying, who's going to be singing? Lord, I don't know who's going to sing, but I hope you give them a little touch. Yeah. Where all week long we've been thinking about and meditating on the Lord's law day and night, and we come in ready to shout it out, yeah. give a testimony whether he asked for one or not. Yeah. He has committed unto us not just his gospel, he's committed unto us himself. Right, right. And I can't do what he can. That's why God said, you know, if I be lifted up, draw all men unto me. Yeah. Amen. Just take of that little bit of him that he's given you. And if we're faithful to raise him up, it's going to be hunky dory. Yeah. That's it. Done. You know what trees do? They grow to the heavens. When you look at the top of the tree, you can't help but see the one that it's pointing to. Yeah. 
We're to be trees in God's yeah. service. Amen. There were the cedars of Lebanon. Cedars are pictures of faith. The oak tree is a picture of stability. Hmm? Every tree in the Bible is there that points to God. Are you pointing to God? He has entrusted you with himself. What are you doing with it? Now look back in that text in John 2. I want you to see something here. Verse 23, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, of course he was there. The whole feast was about him. Yeah. Got news for you. Starting in Exodus 12, he never missed a Passover. But notice this. In the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. And Jordan was right. They didn't believe on his name. You got born again because you believed on the name that's above every name. Right. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus, upon the Lord, shall be saved. You called because you believed on and got born again. They believed in. They believed in him when they saw the miracles which he did. What propelled them to believe in him? When they saw the great acts and deeds that he did that nobody else could do. Now the charismatics are always looking for a miracle and a sign. They're looking for some wonder. Hmm? Uh, the evangelicals have these dance revivals and they have these song fests that gets people all built up in emotion because they want a miracle. Everybody's looking for a miracle. Well, Jesus used miracles in that day to prove he was the Christ. Amen. He uses miracles today to prove that he's changed lives. Amen. You want to see miracles? Look around. Everybody's been blood washed is a miracle. Amen. He done said there was nothing good in us. We were just totally depraved. Hmm? We're going back to the dust of the earth. But he came to where we were in our depravity because he'd already nailed our depravity on the cross, showed us our lost condition. And when we believed on his name and repented, he saved us and changed us. We're the miracles. He entrusted us with himself that we will go and show the world what Jesus can do. Don't get to where you begin to think like a Pharisee that you deserve to get to come to church. That you deserve the blessings of God. You need to remember what garbage dump he found you in. And that's what you got to tell him. This is what it was, but I'm not that no more. What happened, Jesus happened. And when they see the change he's done in you, the miracle, just perhaps they'll believe on him because it changed your life. Go be the miracle. Go show them the miracle. Go show them the outstanding handiwork of God. When they talk about, oh, isn't it beautiful? The leaves are turning. Isn't it beautiful? Say, I'll show you something more beautiful that God did. Me. I was lost and on my way to hell. But the great handiwork of God went to work. And I'm not going to hell anymore. Because the blood of Jesus has been applied. And I've been set free. I'm free, free, free. Been saved by the grace of God. They talk about the sunsets. Tell them, well, I'll tell you about the greatest miracle when the sun set on me. Be the miracle. Be the handiwork of God. Amen. Show them what Christ entrusted you with Amen. himself. Hmm? You don't need to be a Bible scholar. Just show them what he did. Be the miracle. Hmm? Quit letting the devil beat you up. Just go be a miracle. Just go tell people. Christ in me. What else better could be said of you? But 
preacher, it's so hard. Just be the miracle. It's not hard being the miracle. It's hard being a Bible scholar. It's not hard being a miracle. Just be the miracle. Hmm? Everywhere Jesus went, there were throngs of people wanting a miracle. Be the miracle. They still are looking for it. They're seeing a bunch of fictitious stuff called miracles. Be the miracle. Show them Christ in you. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come and say, God, help me to be the miracle. Maybe, just maybe, you don't know him. Why don't you come and accept him? You can be the miracle. Be the greatest day of your life. Yes, sir. Huh? Good. Maybe you need to come and thank him. He planted you by the waters. He didn't plant you in the yeah. desert. I'd much rather be a tree than a cactus. Hmm? Maybe you need to say, God, help me with my focus. Hmm? They're picking out a song. Folks are coming. Let's pray. Father, we bless you for being so good to us. Thank you that we've prospered because you've entrusted us with yourself. Now, God, help us to be the miracle. Help us to bless your name before a lost and dying world. Help us to show them Christ in me. Bless this invitation now. These on the altar, help them. Those that uh, uh, may not be on the altar that are praying, help them. Those that, Lord, are standing there and they're not focused. God, get their attention. Help them to give praise unto thee. Bless this invitation. Somebody lost, God, save them. Well, thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.